What's up everybody, it's Two Yellow Water Sports. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about something that's very simple, but that is absolutely crucial when it comes to window tinting, okay? So before we even put any film down on these cars, the first thing we gotta do is clean them. And how do we do that? This, because there's definitely a way to do that, do it effectively. Uh, do it in a way where you'll have very to little contaminants. Doesn't mean that you won't have to clean again before you install but I'll at least show you how to at least get everything prepped and ready to go. So if you have somebody that works with you at your shop or if you have an assistant, this is something that you can give to them. It's easy to teach, um, but it still has to be done correctly. So let's get right into that. So first thing I'm gonna do is usually when the car first comes into my shop, first of all, I like the cars clean. So if the car is very dirty, we're probably gonna ask that they get that washed either prior or it's something that you can offer in-house. A clean car, is just gonna make the install a little bit better. I mean, the whole goal of window tinting is ultimately how do we install this film with zero to little no contaminants. Now I will say, if you're new to tinting, zero contamination is damn near impossible. And I know that's something you're not gonna hear from most window tinters out there, but hey, that's the truth. I've inspected literally every tint that I've seen on every car at SEMA and every car show around the country that I've been to. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna use my slip solution. This is just Baby Johnson shampoo uh, with water. And I'm gonna just clean my glass. Now, some of the steps that I like to do, some people might say it's overkill, but I think that in window tinting, uh, all these things that we consider overkill, uh, it's true that there are some steps and you will learn to minimize those steps to be faster. But being overkill to me is not really a thing when it comes to tinting just because cleanliness is such a key factor to a clean install. So I sprayed my glass. Now I'm using Doodle Bug. This is a 3M scrubby pad. It's a non-scratch pad. Very similar to the green scrubbies that you have in-house that you use for your dishes. Except that this is a non-scratch. Um, so you don't run the risk of damaging your glass. Now when I'm cleaning this, I'm not going for the cleanest window possible. I just want to kind of clean any dirt that might be on there. Now a technique that you can also f do is feel with your hand and you're just feeling for anything that might be stuck on the glass, either tree sap, dirt, things like that. Now, some people might say you don't need to clean the outside glass. Um, and, and, and you certainly can tint without having to do this. But like I said, cleanliness is the name of the game and I like to have clean windows inside for sure and definitely outside as well. Especially if I'm gonna shrink film. Uh, if there's a lot of contaminants on the glass, then a lot of times you'll imprint that contamination on the film. So I've got the outside clean, let's go to the other side and I'll clean the inside. Okay, so we've cleaned the outside of our glass, now we're coming to the inside. Now, uh, if you two-step, basically meaning that you install this without taking door cards, uh, the cleaning process is essentially gonna be the same. But if you see this, it's because we like the bottom loader here, Yellow Auto Sports, meaning we take the door cards off. Um, and this was pretty easy panel to remove, and maybe we can address that in future videos. But let's go ahead and clean this inside glass. Now, there's a few areas on a glass on the inside that are very crucial to cleaning, okay? One, it's going to be this top edge. This top edge likes to obviously hide and tuck itself into this gasket up here. And a lot of dirt gets collected up here. Also, when people clean their glass, uh, even if there's somewhere that I clean meticulously every day, if you're not a window tinter, you're generally cleaning your glass just like this, but you're not actually running across this top edge, okay? So this top edge will always collect the most dirt. The other key points are gonna be on your gaskets, on the inside of those gaskets, right? Because when we clean glass and we wipe, we're just automatically stopped by this gasket, so we can't go past that. So we wanna flush these sides using a lot of, uh, of our slip solution to kind of flush these things down. So top edge and these corners are very hidden. They're very dirty, hold a lot of contamination, definitely key areas to watch out for. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna razor blade this whole glass. Now when I razor blade, I'm using a stainless steel razor blade. Now here's a little key advice. If you have a car that's 2020, I would say, or newer, something that's probably three, four years old, a lot of times the scrubby pad is going to do just fine. It's going to clean the glass effectively. It's going to get rid of any small dirt or anything that might be stuck on there. And just like the front window, you can run your hand and feel for any dirt nibs that might be jammed in there. I've always started with the razor blade, so I tend to still use the razor blade, but just make sure it's stainless steel so that you have less chances, chances of scratching. 
Another big thing is if you if the car comes with these little factory stickers, in this case here, we have a Sirius XM sticker. It's something that you want to address with the client to let them know, hey, you're going to take it off. Could you tint over it? You certainly can, but uh, for a cleaner look, you, you probably want to take that off. And so make sure you address that with the client just so that they're aware that that sticker is going to be coming off, okay? If they absolutely want to keep it on, I'd still suggest that you tell them that we have to remove it. But if they insist, I'll let the client be right in that case, okay? But generally, you'd want to take that off. So, so I'm going to be a little bit generous with my slip solution here. The nice thing about bottom loading is I can cover this door card, so I'm not too worried about getting everything wet. Now, like I said earlier, option one, option two, I'm going to go straight to option two in this case. I'm going to run my blade across the top, and I'm nice and parallel, okay? I don't want to have an angle on this blade. I'm really get, run, I'm running it as parallel as I can. Now, there's two things when I'm cleaning glass like this. Not only am I overlapping 50-50, if you need an example, just think of it as like when you're mowing the lawn. If you've not mowed a lawn, then uh, probably should go volunteer to do that. But anyway, I'm overlapping 50-50. The point is that I don't miss anything. If you see, I'm barely leaving any water on the glass. I'm not only scraping with this, with the blade, I'm also listening, okay? I'm listening. I'm not hearing anything that's on there. There are some glass that will have actually defects and have little nibs on them. You know, they almost, if you've ever seen a, a dirt nib on a paint, it's very, very similar to that, and you actually be able to hear it. Um, another key thing to look out for, sometimes windows have been tinted prior. So what does that mean? That means that it was probably tinted, dealership took it off, sold you the car. Well, what does that mean for us as window tinters? It means that there's probably going to be some glue left over, in, especially in these far areas. A lot of times the dealership will have the guy in the back, the, the runner, have them, have them remove it, right? Because it's not something that they want to give to the technician or anything like that. Well, what happens is they, because they're not intending to tint the window again, they're going to take all the, the tint off and most of the glue. But like I said, most is not good enough. And window tinting cleanliness is the name of the game. So I'm only saying that because I noticed a little bit of glue on this top corner that was still there. So as soon as you see any glue remaining, that should be a telltale sign that this window was probably tinted. And it's a key point to keep in mind. Because when you actually see that, you have to assume that every glass around this car was also tinted at one point. Now, it might have just been these front two, but you want to be um, mindful and just pay attention to that and keep it in mind that if I saw it once, it's probably all around, okay? So now I've done the cleaning. Now I'm just going to clean this bottom half. And yes, I am lifting off the glass a little bit each time. Now, if you could come over here, I want to show you how I'm going to get the sticker off. Okay, so I want to get a good amount of slip on here. I'm going to turn my blade, and I'm going to just show you at this angle. Now, I like to work with my right hand. I'm just more comfortable in that sense. But I will show you. So you're essentially running your blade um, completely parallel to the glass. And I usually will turn it and put most of my pressure on just the one angle. And if I run it correctly... I'm essentially just peeling the sticker. Now, once I have it lifted off the glass, I can, you know, sometimes pull it completely off. And this one, I can tell, is newer just because it's not breaking or cracking or delaminating on me. But I still want to run my finger there and double check that I got all the glue. If I'm not sure, I'm going to just come back with my razor blade and just make sure that it's all clean. I'm also going to visually inspect making sure that there is no glue on top of actually physically feeling it with my finger. Okay, so that was how to prep a glass from the inside and outside. I try to give you as many tips as I could. Uh, so I hope that it was educational. I hope that you learned something. If you're a window tinter out there, feel free to reach out Yellow Auto Sports uh, on YouTube, like the page, subscribe, and make sure that you ask any questions that you might have. If you're not a window tinter and you just happen so to stop by this video, well, I hope that you learned something about what it is to be a window tinter and the things that we look out for to make sure that we can give you the best results possible when we're tinting your vehicle. Uh, any questions? Additionally, anybody, if you got them, just leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure to address those. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. We'll catch you in the next video.